there's not really any readathons I'm partaking in. I am doing a kind of video TBR. It's okay. What words? <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with February's TBR. which means it's time for another dip into the basket of reads, the TBR basket, the game I play here. If you're new here, hello, welcome, thanks for joining. I'll leave linked above the video that came out, I think like last year, where I went over all the details of the rules and everything, if you'd like to check it out. As far as February goes, I'm not really taking place in any readathons that I'm aware of. I might just change my mind halfway through and like discover what I want to do. But as of recording this, I'm not really doing that. I am doing kind of like a secret TBR of sorts which will be coming out at the end of this month uh, so stay tuned for that I will if any if I can fit any of the books that I want to read for that I'll mention that they're part of that uh, but stay tuned for that I'm very excited about it um, but this month as I usually do my biggest plan is to read as much romance as I can I do have some stuff going on like for my job that I'm gonna be focusing on so I don't know how much of this I'm actually gonna get to so if we get to March and I decide you know I had a really tough month I might not take any punishments for this month, but we'll decide that later. I might be a little easier on myself this month and maybe next month because I've got some things going on. Um, not bad, just like studying and stuff. So I we'll, we'll see how I feel with that. But let's take a quick look at January because if you guys remember, January TBR was all kinds of mean to me. Um, and uh, there's too many to hold up. So I'm just gonna go one by one and uh, let's let's see how I did. So if you remember last month I had I picked out the little thingy that made me pick two books for every prompt so instead of what did I say eight we had 16. Uh, so for the first prompt which was A to Z book we had A Dance with the Fae Prince by Elise Kova which was for the letter D and then we also had Winter House by Ben Gooderson which was for W. Then had to read an adult book so I picked The Sound in the Snow by Catherine Kingsley as well as King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. The next one was to read a book where either the author or the main character was Asian. So we had the fifth volume of A Dreaming Sun by Ichigo Chiganu and then These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. The next one was to read a book you don't know much about. So we had Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas as well as A Lot So A by Darcy Little Badger. I discovered I've been saying it wrong thanks to the audiobook A Lot So A. The next one was to read a book by Philippa Gregory. So I did the next two in the Plantagenet slash Tudor series. So we have The Other Boleyn Girl and The Boleyn Inheritance. Next one was to read a humorous book, so I did both A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare as well as The One Runaway Bride by Joanna Lowell. We then had a random color generator which gave us Under the Whispering Door and I believe I got the pink that was right here and then as well as Lore Olympus by Rachel Smith which I think I got this purple color right here. And lastly was to read a book with mental health representation. So we had the fourth volume of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman as well as A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. As of filming this, this looks much worse than it actually is. I have these, what is it, five, one, two, three, four, six that I haven't read. So, um, Laura Olympus, excuse me while I drop things, Laura Olympus is a graphic novel and I've got a few days left in the month so I'm definitely going to be finishing that. So I won't be taking a punishment for that one. And then I'm also in the middle of a lots away so I'm not going to take a punishment for that one as well. And then I also have started a dance with the Fae Prince. I'm not sure I'm going to finish this by the end of the month but considering it's on my 2022 books to read and I have started it so I will be rolling it over to February no matter what. I'm also not going to take a punishment for this just because like, I'm still gonna read it. It just might not be this month. It'll be next month if dead. So with all of that being said, these are the three that I have not started, which is King of Battle and Blood, Under the Whispering Door, and The Sound of Snow. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a punishments for all three of these. I thought about like trying to sneak in Under the Whispering Door at the end of the month, but considering I really wanna do this as a buddy read with my friend Lauren, I'm gonna hold off until we both feel ready for that because like, We've tried it a couple of months and we both like forget and like life gets in the way. So we'll try that again later. But these are the three that I didn't read. So we will be taking three punishments. So instead of eight picks, we will be doing 11. And by God, fingers crossed, this basket is nice to me this month because I need it to be. I need it to be because I have so many books that I want to like squeeze in this month for one reason or another. So, oh, let's all pray. Anyway, let's get to the first pick. Pick 
Number one. It's this one, which is to read your next book in the same place the whole time. The first one is to read a book sitting in the same place the entire time. I really need to take some of these out and just rewrite them because they're worded very weirdly. Uh, but this one is just to read the book in the same place the whole time. So I'm going to be reading the sixth volume of Dreaming Sun by Ichigo Taganu. Um, I read the fifth one last month, so stay tuned for my thoughts. I wasn't my favorite, um, so I'm curious to see where the story is going to go, just because I do love these characters so much, but they did some things in the last one that I wasn't a fan of. Um, I also discovered while reading this that I have been telling you guys the main character's name wrong this entire time. I'm halfway through this series. Anyway, it's Shimana is the main character's name, um, and in the first book she basically moves in with a bunch of these guys that she goes to school with, and it's really kind of a found family trope. She's trying to find herself, coming of age, She's it's about high school age as well, um, and this is just the next step in their journey. And like I said, I'm not in love with what happened in the last volume, but I love these characters so much that I'm obviously going to stick it out. I have all of them at this point. So I'm going to stick it out and I can definitely read this one in one spot. Pick number two. Here we go. Got, ooh, a foiled cover. So the next one is to read a book with a foiled cover, which is perfect because I'm going to be picking up A Sprinkle of Sorcery by Michelle Harrison. This is the second in her Pinch of Magic series. There are three out. Um, there's three out in the UK. I can't remember if the third one is out in the US yet. But this one's audiobook I think came out relatively recently. So I'm going to be diving into this one and as you can see, all the foiling. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. Uh, but this series follows three sisters, um, and they basically, like, have magical... They don't have magical powers, but they have, like, these magical items that um, they've been given. And in the first one, at least, there's a curse, and they're not allowed to leave the island that they live on, or they will die within, like, 24 to 48 hours, I believe, of leaving that island. And it's them going on an adventure. So I'm not sure where the second one's gonna go, because the back is, like, very cryptic about what is happening. So I'll read you what it says, but it says three sisters with a magical secret, a race against time to find a place that exists only in fairy tales, a journey that will take them into unimaginable danger. That tells me nothing, uh, but I loved the first one so much, so I can't wait to get to this one, and this will be my middle grade for the month as well. Pick number three. Oh, here we go. Reread a favorite. Ooh, 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 ooh. The next one is to reread a favorite. And I always have mixed feelings when this one comes up because usually it comes up in a month that like I want specific things to read and therefore I don't have time to sit down and reread one that I've already read. But this month is actually perfect. So for this one, I'm going to reread Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood, the first in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass, because the second one in this series comes out, I think the 15th of February, it comes out somewhere around Valentine's Day. And I cannot tell you that that is, that is for sure my favorite, like most anticipated release of the year. Like I am so excited. But it's been about a year, not quite a year, since I read the first one. And I have a friend who's actually currently reading this. It's the one that I always talk about Akatar with. And I'm I just like I know I'm gonna forget some stuff. So I wanted to reread this before I got into the second one. And um now I can. So it's gonna go on the TBR. I do have the audiobook of this on Audible, so I'll be able to plow through this one. But it's just a refresher of my favorite characters, and I cannot wait to dive back into this world because I loved it so much the first time. And I usually don't do this where, like, I'll reread a book because the sequel is coming out, but I would die for these characters. So I am so excited. Number four. Here we go. Read, <laughs> read a smut book. <laughs> then, so the next one is again one of those weird ones that was phrased oddly, but this is <laughs> to read a book with smut in it or a smutty book. And so this one, I'm going to assume 
counts. I mean, I think it counts, but it is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I'm gonna say this counts because not only is it a romance book, so it's most likely gonna have smutty scenes. This follows a kind of group of men who are reading historical romances to basically better themselves romantically for their wives, girlfriends, etc. And we follow a man named Gavin, who is a major league uh, like I think baseball player um, and his him and his wife are having some issues and I think she throws around the divorce word and he's like oh god no and so it's kind of like a second chance romance and so he goes to this book club to help out a little bit. I've heard a lot of good things. I've heard a couple of interesting things so I'm gonna say that this is smutty so if you've read this let me know if I'm correct but I'm saying it's smutty because not only are they is it a romance book? They're reading historical romances, which are usually quite smutty. So I'm very excited about this one. This one is definitely for that secret TBR of sorts that I am doing, um, just as a little hint. So that's one of those. But I'm very excited about this one. I've had my eye on this one to read in February for the longest time. So I'm so excited I can finally do it. Book number five. Here we go. read a romance. And then the next one is just to read a romance. I mean, so far, knock on wood, but so far the basket's been okay to me. Hesitant. Um, but this is to read a romance, so I'm going to be finally picking up Pride and Prejudice and Other Flavors. Sorry, Pride, Prejudice and Other Flavors by Sonali Dev. This is the first in a series that right now has three books out. There's a fourth one coming out this year where it's a romantic reimagining of Pride and Prejudice or Jane Austen. This one's Pride and Prejudice, but the series is different Jane Austen books. I have the first two, which is Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion, I think. Yeah, Persuasion. And then there's a Sense of Sensibility one that came out last year, I want to say. And then this year, there's one based on Emma. And I have the first two and I keep stopping myself from buying and then pre-ordering the next one because I haven't read them yet. So I'm going to freaking do it. Um, and honestly, I don't know a whole lot about this one except for that it is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. And I believe it is set, yeah, it says right here, it is set in an overachieving Indian American family. So I'm very interested to see where this goes. It is an adult romance, so I'm very excited for that. Um, and I just, I love, I love Jane Austen retellings, and usually when they're adult and they're set in different cultures, I just find that fascinating. So this is going to be my pick, and hopefully I'll get around to it, and I will finally freaking start this series. And then once I read, the, read this one, I can buy the rest of them. That's what I do. Book number six. This one. Read a book set in a warm place. So the next one is to read a book set in a warm place. So I'm gonna, I think this works. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this works. And that is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. I'm saying this is in a warm place because I see palm trees on here and like she's in a dress um, with no sleeves, I think. Or it's, no, there's some sleeves, like a halter. Um, but there's palm trees, which makes me think that it's set in like a California. Even if it is set in winter, California is relatively warm. So that's why I'm going to assume that this is warm. Uh, but this is a kind of adult reimagining based on Cinderella. So this book follows a girl named Cindy uh, who was plus sized and she's obsessed with shoes. Um, and she just got a design degree, but she doesn't have a job yet. So she moves back in with her stepmother, who is the executive producer of the world's biggest reality dating show. And then something happens and a contestant falls out or like decides not to be part of it at the last minute and she is thrust into the spotlight and she's like oh this is great I'll use this as an opportunity to show off my shoe collection and like maybe people will hire me. She's the first and only plus size contestant on this show and so that garners a lot of attention so not only is it her trying to get her name out there she all of a sudden becomes like very like everyone's watching her because she is this first plus size woman on this show um and i do think that there is of course a love interest as well so it's a like cinderella bachelor sort of retelling um and i'm very excited about this i've heard really really good things about it so yeah that's that's what's going on my list also like look at this compared to like a normal paperback like this is huge why is it so large i don't know but this is definitely on that secret TBR as well. Number seven. Here we go. Read a 
read a book with an LGBT plus character. The next one is to read a book with an LGBTQ plus character. And so for this one, I'm going to be reading Where the Drowned Girls Go by Seanan McGuire. Seanan McGuire is really good about like peppering in all kinds of different representation. So I'm going to put this one in for this prompt because I think something will work. If not, then I'll find something and replace it. But I'm planning on reading this with my friend Teresa. We've buddy read the entire series of this. This is actually the book that she got me for Christmas, so thank you so much, Teresa. Uh, but this is set in a world where there are kids who go through doors, kind of like Alice from Alice in Wonderland, into other worlds, and these other worlds are like the perfect world for them. And then sometimes things happen where like the world kicks the kids out or the kids leave the world by accident and they're stuck back in like their original reality. And so there are homes for these kids and that's where all of these books are mostly set is either in their individual worlds or at this home. So this one follows our main character Cora who we met in the third book in this series and she has decided to transition to a different home which is way different than the one that we've come to know. So this is the first time we've ever seen someone not related to this home. Like basically this is the first time we've ever seen a different home and I'm very interested to see where we're going to go from here. But I've loved these really short books. They've become definitely one of my favorite series so I cannot wait to dive into this one. Number eight. Here we go. And it is read a book with a light cover. So the next one is to read a book with a light cover. And so for this one, I'm actually going to be using one of the arcs I need to read this month because I have quite a few. And this one is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. So I will leave, as always, I'll leave all the books down below. But I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what this one's about. But it does kind of, it's, it's like a modern retelling of like Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. And I believe it is like a doctor who's obsessed with love and like somebody else who's not obsessed with love or vice versa. But there's two polar opposites that are like forced to work together. And I think there's some sort of TV show that comes out of it. So I'm very interested to read this one. I actually was introduced to this one by Katie Roberts. She, she posted about it on her Instagram, like raving about this book. So I put it on my anticipated releases and I can't believe I actually have it. So this one comes out on March 15th, I believe. So I'm trying to get to this one before it comes out hopefully by the end of the month. So maybe if I put it on my TBR I'll actually read it. But it sounds amazing. I remember really enjoying kind of like the synopsis of it so I can't wait to dive in. Pick number nine. Oh, here we go. For goodness sake. Okay. Most recent purchase. Oh. The next book is the book that you literally just recently purchased, the last one you hauled, which is perfect because the last one I hauled right before, well, a few days before filming this one, is Weather Girl. And this one is by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This book is very relatively new to my radar. I bought it because it's going to be part of that secret TBR again. Um, and so this one is, it just sounds like so much fun. So it takes place at a news station, which if you guys have been around for a hot second, you guys know I used to work in news. So like that, like that enough, that was enough to grab my attention. Uh, but it is a meteorologist and a sports reporter who basically work to get their bosses together so they can have more free time. It reminds me of this Netflix movie that I watched a few years ago called like Set It Up I think where it's basically th these two assistants who try to get their bosses back together for that exact reason. But this one takes place in a news station and I'm just so freaking excited about it. So I don't know a whole lot more beyond that. I do know that, that I believe there is some representation in here with our meteorologist. I believe she has depression if I'm correct but I, I've heard nothing but good things about this book, so I could not wait to get my hands on it, and I cannot wait to freaking read this book. It looks amazing. Pick number 10. Oh, here we go. Read a book you, you're you scared to read. Oh, okay. The next one is a book that you're scared to read. So this one will be a huge surprise to you if you've been on this channel, but that is my Tessa Dare Buddy Read, which is a Lady by Midnight. This is the third in her Spindle Cove series that I'm reading with my friends Taylor and Brooke. And I'm saying I'm scared to read this one because the last couple books in this series 
we haven't really loved that much. I mean, I liked the second one more than the first one, and I loved the Christmas novella. That's been my favorite so far, but there's been some hints in the last book about this couple, and it's giving me the feels of, like, the series that I've read previously by her that I absolutely adore, which is the Girl Meets Duke series. Those are still my favorite by far, and this is giving me those vibes from what I've, what's been hinted in the past books. So I'm hoping this will be good, but I'm hesitantly optimistic, <laughs> and I'm scared because, like, I don't want her to hurt me again, because I feel like this series just keeps hurting me over and over. I get excited, and then it's never as good as I want it to be. But this one in particular follows Kate, who is at Spindle Cove, and just back up. So this series is, takes place at Spindle Cove, which is basically a seaside town where a bunch of girls go if they don't fit in with society, if they've got some sort of illness, if they're wallflowers, things like that. This is where they go to really recuperate is how it's called. People call it Spinster Cove because it's a lot of women that usually don't get married and so they come here and so this is a bunch of people in the town's respective romances. So this one follows Kate who we've known for the past couple of books. She's honestly so much fun and she and this guy because in the first book a bunch of militia come into town so Corporal Thorne is one of them and he is been very silent, kind of very quiet. He doesn't really show emotions at all. And it's the two of them somehow get into a fake engagement. And then obviously there's going to be real feelings because of that. And it's been hinted at, like I said, in the last book specifically. And I am really excited about them. But again, I'm also terrified. Like I don't want her to hurt me again. So fake engagement is usually like a one-way ticket to a five star for me so I'm hoping that's the way it's gonna happen in this one but uh I'm very very hesitant about it and last one number 11 oh I gotta fix this the back of this is awful okay uh here we go Right, read a book that will make you smile. And number 11, the very last pick, is read a book that will make you smile. So for this one, I'm going to read another, or I'm gonna pick another one of the arcs that I need to read, which is Mr. Wrong Number. And I can't remember who this is by, but it, oh, it's right here. So this is one that I literally just stumbled upon and was like, oh, this looks like fun. And then I, I got approved. And I believe this one comes out on the first of the month, if I am correct, the first of March, I mean. Um, and so this one, it's been a while since I've read the synopsis, but basically this follows two people who, uh, someone accidentally texts our main character and she like responds. And so there's this flirtation that's going between the two of them. And if I remember correctly, it's actually like a neighbor of hers that she doesn't get along with in real life. So it's one of those like real life doesn't get along, but like online gets along. And that just seems really interesting to me. This cover looks like a lot of fun. I do think I'm going to start giggling a lot during this book because of just some of the situations our characters are going to get in. I think it's going to be really funny. So I'm going to say that this one's going to make me smile because it is a romance and usually romances make me smile. But also it just sounds like a lot of fun. Like it really just, I love it. I love it so much. That's all I have for the my regular TBR. I do have a couple more things that I wanted to mention. I do have one more book for that secret TBR. Um, it's called Wall Street Titan. I don't remember exactly what it's about, but it's like a billionaire romance of sorts. Uh, so I have that one on my Kindle, so I'm planning on reading that one as well. And I do have one more arc, which is The Valet Secret, and this one comes out on March 8th. It's been a while since, again, I did not prepare for this very well. It's been a while since I read what this is about, but I believe it follows this woman who falls for this guy. Like, she's like a maid or something, and she falls for this guy thinking that he's a valet, and it turns out that he's actually like the Duke or the Earl that owns this house, and it's the two of them trying to figure out what to do with that because social norms dictate that that's a no-no, but like he, it sounds like he will drop everything for her. So I'm very curious about like that situation that makes me very happy. And then my nonfiction book is one that I'm going to actually pick up from the library, and it's All the Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a book that follows George, it's kind of like a memoir of sorts, and he is a gay man and it follows him and his life and I've heard literally nothing but good things and I've also heard that you need to listen to the audiobook of this book because he does do it himself so I'm really interested to see about this one so that's gonna be my non-fiction pick because I 
I don't know, it just sounds really good. So those are the couple of extra books that I want to add on this month. I think that's really all I've got for now though. I think those are the only ones I'm gonna add on beyond the 11. So like, there's no way, there's no way I'm gonna get to all of these, it's ridiculous. All right, so here's a look at my TBR, very red <laughs> and like purple this month, not that I'm upset, um, plus the few uh, ebooks and stuff that I mentioned. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good month, lots of romance like I wanted. You guys know I love me some romance all year round, but I like dedicating February to mostly romance because, um, hi, I like romance. <laughs> but that is all I have for you guys today. So let me know if you've read any of the books that I have mentioned in today's video or what is something that you are planning on doing in February. Are you participating in any readathons? Are you dedicating the month to like Black History Month? Are you dedicating it to romance? Let me know. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to check all of that out, and I will see you guys in my next video.